Hello, I'm Chris. Today, I'm going to show you how to drive a manual car. This basic guide for beginners covers how to move off, stop, how to change gear and when, plus clutch control and hill starts. Let's get started by looking at how to get the car moving off and how to stop. First things first, make sure the doors are closed, seat adjusted, seat belt on, steering wheel in the right position and mirrors adjusted. So we've got three pedals. This one is the accelerator. Your instructor will probably call this the gas pedal as it's easier and quicker to say. Use your right foot for this one. The foot brake is in the middle. Again, use your right foot. You can position your right foot between these two pedals and pivot on your heel so you can find the pedals quickly. And as they're sensitive, making sure you're not stamping on them. The clutch pedal is on the left. Use your left foot for this one. You should be able to press the clutch all the way down without stretching, but you also don't want to be too cramped up to it. For more information on how to adjust the seat, steering column and mirrors, have a look at the link in the description. To keep it simple and not have a video of me just talking, let me demonstrate how and when to use these controls to get the car moving off and stopping. Before starting the car, for safety, make sure the car is in neutral. You can check by moving the gear lever left or right. It should feel springy. If it's in gear, then it won't move much side to side. We'll talk more about the gears a bit later. Also, make sure the parking brake is on. It should be up rather than down. We'll talk more about the parking brake a bit later too. To start the car, hold the clutch all the way down to the floor. And in this car, I just press the start button. If I didn't press the clutch, this modern car wouldn't start. If you're driving a car with a key, then turn it normally just one click until these dashboard warning lights come on. The ignition is now on, which basically means the electrics are now working. Things like music and electric windows now work. Press the clutch down to the floor, turn the key and hold it until the car starts, then let go of the key. You can also release the clutch now. Unless there's a problem with the car, you'll probably notice how the warning lights have gone off, apart from this one. This warning light means that the parking brake is on, which at the moment is a good thing as I don't want the car to possibly start rolling away. To move off, I'll press the clutch fully down and select first gear. Whenever you need to change gear, always fully press the clutch down to the floor. To select first, I need to follow this diagram on top of the gear lever. The letter R is for reverse gear and it can be in a different place depending on the car. I have to lift a metal collar to select reverse so I won't be able to put it in reverse by accident. Memorize this diagram in your car and remember where the gears are because when you're driving, looking down at it will be distracting. At the moment, it's in neutral, which means it's not in any gear. This point here is neutral. To select first gear, I need to push it to the left and then forward to first. Having your palm facing to the left will make it easier. Now I need to set the gas. This is a sensitive pedal and you only need to press it slightly about the thickness of a pound coin to get the revs between one and one and a half. But you don't need to be precise. Then hold your foot still. You might overdo it at first, but you will get used to it. You would need to give it a bit more gas if you're moving off uphill or no gas if you're moving off downhill. With practice, you'll get used to the sound of the engine, which means that you won't have to look at the rev counter. Now I need to raise the clutch to the biting point. Slowly bring the clutch up until you feel the back of the car dip slightly. The front raises slightly too, and the engine sound changes. Now keep your feet still. This is the car wanting to go forward, and the only thing holding it back is the parking brake. I'll press the clutch back down and 
find the biting point again. I'll do it again. The first part of raising the clutch doesn't do anything, but then you'll feel the back of the car dip a little. If I raise the clutch too high, then the car really wants to go a bit too much, and it can overpower the parking brake, move off quickly, or stall. You only want to feel the back of the car dip a little. Lower the clutch down slightly if it does try and move off too much, or push the clutch all the way down, and start again for the practice. Once you've found the biting point, you can rest the heel of your foot on the floor, as it can help you have more control. Get used to where the biting point is in your car, as it can vary from car to car. Now I need to make sure it's safe to move off by checking all the mirrors and blind spot over my right shoulder. Signal if it would benefit anyone, and there's someone behind in a parked car, so I'll signal for them. Keeping my feet still is really important. I've got the gas set and biting point. Double checking the mirrors and blind spot, still safe, so I just need to release the parking brake. You won't be able to release it just by pressing the button. Instead, pull the parking brake up slightly and press the button at the same time. Fully lower the parking brake down, then let go of the button. It's important to keep your feet still for a couple of seconds as the car begins to move, until you're moving faster than a walking pace, and then slowly raise the clutch with a little more gas. If you raise the clutch too soon, then the car could stall. Little steering needed, keeping roughly a meter away from the curb. Now you can release the gas pedal to slow down, or press it slightly to increase speed. The gas pedal is so sensitive. Now the car will continue to go, even if you don't press the gas. It will just move very slowly in first gear. I'm now going to pull up on the left in a safe, convenient and legal place without stalling. I'll have checked the interior and left mirror, signal if it benefits anyone, I'm off the gas pedal and my feet are ready with the brake and clutch. Now I'll press the clutch and gently brake to stop. Keeping both feet on the brake and clutch, parking brake on by pressing the button, pulling it up and then releasing the button. The parking brake should hold the car, and prevent it from rolling away. Select neutral by moving it down slightly, so it springs to this central position. You can check it's in neutral by moving the gear lever left and right, and it should move freely. If you don't select neutral, and release the clutch, then the car will jerk forward, and stall. Now you can release the pedals, and cancel the signal if it's been on. And that's how you move off, and stop in a manual car. There's so much information, and a good way to remember it is to keep repeating it. So let's do it again. This car has auto start stop. It's a feature that saves fuel. Because I haven't actually switched off the car, it's kind of in a rest mode, but as soon as I press the clutch, it restarts automatically. So, clutch down, first gear, set the gas, revs up to about one and a half, Raise the clutch to the biting point so you feel the back of the car dip slightly and the engine sound changes. I'll show you again. Now keep your feet still. Check the mirrors and the blind spot over my right shoulder. If it is unsafe to go and you have to wait, then don't hold the biting point unnecessarily, as you don't want to increase wear on the clutch. Instead, come off the gas and press the clutch back down. And when it's safe to go, set the gas and find the biting point again. Now signal if necessary, release the parking brake, feet still for a couple of seconds, clutch up slowly with a little more gas. If you release the clutch too soon, then you could stall. If it's possible, I'm trying to keep at least the doors a width away from these parked vehicles, or about a meter away from the curb if there isn't any. To pull up on the left, I'll check the mirrors, signal if necessary, off gas, 
clutch down, softly brake to stop. Parking brake on, select neutral, you can now come off the pedals and cancel the signal if it's been on. You should press the clutch about two car lengths before stopping. If you stop without the clutch, then the car will stall and you'll have to start the engine again. Bear in mind that you can brake to slow down, and you don't need to press the clutch. But if you want to come to a complete stop, then remember to press the clutch down fully about two car lengths before stopping. A bit later on, we'll go over when to press the clutch down for gear changes, and I'll also demonstrate clutch control. The brakes in a modern car are sensitive, and you might press the brake harder and harder resulting in a bump when you stop. To do an emergency stop, you need to brake firmly, but if you want a nice smooth stop, then just press the brake slightly and keep the same pressure and the car will gently stop. Ease off the brake a little just before stopping completely to get rid of the bump, but definitely make sure you brake harder when you need to. Always think carefully where a safe place is to park, nowhere illegal or where you'll be an inconvenience to others. To help you remember the routine, let's move off again. So, clutch down, first gear. Set the gas, this helps you not stall. Raise the clutch to the biting point until you feel the back of the car dip a little and the front raises slightly. You will notice this better by looking at the horizon. Now don't move your feet, check the mirrors, blind spot, signal if necessary, release the parking brake, feet still for a couple of seconds, slowly release the clutch with a bit more gas. To pull up on the left, check interior mirror, left mirror, signal if it's necessary, off gas, steering left to get the front in, right to get the back in, then straighten the wheels. Clutch down and gently brake to stop. Feet still, parking brake on, select neutral, come off pedals, cancel signal. We're now going to have a look at how to change gear. And a bit later, I'll show you when to change. To change gear, off gas, clutch down, change gear, clutch up gently all the way, and back on the gas pedal. At the moment, the gear lever is in neutral. It's just below third and above fourth. If I move it left or right, the gear lever springs back to neutral. This will be important to remember when changing gear. It's well worth practicing while you're stationary and the engine's off to get used to where each gear is. After a bit of practice, try changing gear without looking down at it. Let's go through all the gears. Neutral to first, palm facing away from you, push left and forward. When you change from first to second, have slight pressure to the left on the gear lever to prevent it from going into fourth. Don't forget the spring is trying to move it back to neutral, which you don't want right now. Having your palm facing to the left will make it easier. Second to third, palm facing to the right, push the gear lever forward slightly, let it spring to neutral and then forward to third. Don't grip the gear lever too tightly. Push forward gently, allow it to spring to neutral, and then forward to third. Your hand position makes it easier to change gear. Straight back for fourth. Push forward slightly to neutral, to the right, and forward to fifth gear. To change to six, have slight pressure to the right as you move it back to the right. Changing down to fifth, slight pressure to the right, and forward to fifth. Back slightly, let it spring to neutral, and straight back to fourth. Push straight forward for third. To make the next gear change easier, position your hand so that your palm is facing left, away from you. Have slight pressure to the left as you move it back a little to neutral, then left, and back for second. Push to the left and forward for first. Push back slightly to let it spring to neutral. Now you know how to change gear. Let's have a look at when to change gear. When to change gear can vary depending on the car, whether you're driving up or downhill or a flat road. 
and also how much weight is in your car. As a general rule, when your car increases speed, you'll also have to change up through the gears, as you can only get so much speed out of each gear. It's not precise, but depending on how fast you want to accelerate, in this car on a flat road, you change up to second gear roughly at about 10 miles per hour. Again, depending on how fast you want to accelerate, change up to third gear at about 20 miles per hour. But don't forget, it's not precise, and it's best to get used to the sound of the engine rather than looking at the dials. When the engine gets louder and sounds like it's working a bit too hard, change gear. The louder it gets, the more fuel it uses. The lower gears provide the most pulling power, so if you're joining a fast busy road, or a motorway for example and need more acceleration, then you'll probably change gear later at slightly faster speeds. But don't accelerate for too long, or too harshly, or you could lose control, use more fuel, and it could be bad for your engine. When driving up steep hills, you should build up momentum, and change up gear at a higher speed than you would on a flat road. If you don't, then gravity will slow the car down quickly and make it struggle. You'd normally move off in first gear as it provides the most pulling power. Also for speeds below 10 miles per hour and driving up or down very steep hills. It's easier to maneuver the car in low gears at slow speeds. But you can't drive very fast in first, whereas six gear provides the fastest speeds, but the least pulling power. Try moving off in a high gear, and the car will stall, and you'll have to restart the engine. You'd normally change to a lower gear after you've slowed down. As a rough guide, if you've reduced your speed below 20 miles per hour, you will need second, and if you've slowed down to a walking speed, you'll need first. But never force the gear lever. You'll also have to change to a lower gear if you need more power from the engine. For example, if you're driving up a steep hill and the car isn't responding to you pressing the gas, making a low rumbling sound, then change down. You can also change to a lower gear if you need extra acceleration to overtake safely. Let's try changing up to 4th and 5th at this speed. As you can see it's much harder to accelerate, the gas pedal is less responsive. Changing down gears when you're driving too fast for that gear can make the car jerk a little. Have a look at our other video for some tips on how to change gear smoothly. Driving in low gears when going down steep hills keeps the car slower and you don't have to brake as much than if you were in a higher gear. This is called engine braking. I'll change up to third and you can see how much it increases the speed. There's certain situations where you can block gear change, which is basically skipping gears. You don't have to change third to second to first, but change straight to first. For example, you can slow down in third gear below 10 miles per hour and change straight to first gear. Slow down to the speed you need, then change to an appropriate gear. You can stop in any gear, but remember to move off in first. Although you can move off down a steep hill in second. If the car wheel spins when moving off in snow, then you could try moving off in second. To help you, let's move off again, and I'll talk you through some gear changes. 
So, clutch down, select first, set the gas, find the biting point, feet still, check mirrors, blind spot check over my right shoulder, signal if necessary, parking brake down, feet still for a couple of seconds, cancel the signal, slowly raise the clutch with a bit more gas. Already at this speed, the car wants second gear. It even tells me on the dashboard. To change gear, off gas, clutch down, change to second gear, clutch up gently all the way and back on the gas pedal. As I build up speed, the engine starts to get noisy again and it sounds like it's working too hard, so I'll have to change up to third gear. Off gas, clutch down, change to third, clutch up gently and back on the gas pedal. Pulling up on the left, check mirrors, signal if anyone would benefit, off gas, light braking, then clutch down. Feet still, parking brake on, neutral, come off the pedals and cancel the signal. I stopped in third gear, which was okay. I didn't need to change to first as I was stopping and didn't need to get ready to go again. I also had to press the brake first that time before the clutch as I was driving quite fast and needed to slow down. I then pressed the clutch about two car lengths before stopping, so the car didn't stall. If I'd pressed the clutch too early then the car would coast and I'd have less control. Coasting is basically freewheeling and the car could build up speed. You can also coast by selecting neutral as you're driving. Again this isn't good and makes the car freewheel and you'll have less control. To change from third to neutral, just move the gear lever back slightly, but don't move it too hard or you'll select fourth. Don't forget, you can check it's in neutral by moving the gear lever left or right and it should move freely. I'm going to turn left into a side road. I've got priority for this. At the moment, I'm in third gear, but I will need to slow down before turning to about 10 to 15 miles per hour, as I don't know what might be in that road. After I've slowed down, I will then change down to second as I've gone below 20 miles per hour, making sure that I've released the clutch before turning so that I'm not coasting. If I turn in third, then it feels a bit juddery and not right. Now it's harder to accelerate. On your first driving lessons, you might feel that you always have to press a pedal when you're driving, or maybe the car will stall. Well, let's try it out and not press any pedals. A modern car will carry on going even if you don't press the gas. In this car in third gear, the speed drops to about 15 miles per hour and stays there. I'll change down to second. In second, it stays at about 9 miles per hour without me pressing anything. Let's try first gear. In first gear, it slows down to about 5 miles per hour. Now, if I try and drive slower, the car starts to judder, and now it's about to stall. To drive slower than 5 miles per hour, I'll have to press the clutch down. To creep forward, a little gas and raise the clutch to the biting point. Lower the clutch about the thickness of a pound coin to slow down or raise it slightly to increase the speed. This is clutch control. Raise the clutch all the way with gas to speed up more. You'll be using clutch control when driving between 0 and 5 miles per hour. For example in slow moving stop start traffic, creeping out at junctions, and when you're slowly manoeuvring the car. At the moment the clutch is controlling the speed and the gas helps the car not stall. When you want to drive faster than five miles per hour, a little more gas and slowly raise the clutch. Sooner or later you're going to come across some hills, big ones and smaller ones like this. The car can roll back if you're too slow setting the gas and finding the biting point.
The easiest way to deal with an uphill start is applying the parking brake and then set the gas and find the biting point. Without the gas, the car could stall and without a biting point, then you'd probably roll back. When you get more confident, you'll be able to set the gas and find the biting point quickly before the car rolls back. Although I'd always recommend using the parking brake when moving off on a steep uphill, as you can then set the gas and find the biting point. There's definitely less chance of stalling or rolling back. You will need to set the gas a little more when moving off on an uphill, so that the car doesn't stall. Revs up to about two on this steep hill. When you get the biting point, the revs try and drop down, so give it a bit more gas as you move away. But using the parking brake doesn't have to delay you. Moving off downhill is a bit simpler. No gas or biting point needed as gravity will make the car move, unless you want to move off a bit faster. Don't forget, you could move off in the second gear, depending on how steep it is. Foot brake ready in case it moves off a bit too quick. Make sure it's safe, signal if necessary, release the parking brake, gradually bring the clutch up, and a little gas if necessary. That's a brief guide on how to drive a manual car. Of course, there's so much, much more to it. So we've put together some free learning to drive modules that can help you learn from home on our website. So go and have a look, it's completely free. A big thanks to everyone that's bought us virtual coffees. They really help keep the channel going. If the video helped, then please press the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. As always, keep safe on the road, thanks for watching and bye for now.